This is Kyle Abair, and I'm here to tell you, Game Realms is the store that will pierce the heavens. Hadouken! Uh, that sort of thing. Hey, jump on here, buddy. Uh, hey, go, yeah, go take a, take a mic. Ladies and gentlemen, the man himself. So happy that he came, came down here to, for us at Game awesome. Realms. Woo, good catch, Maggie, with the save. Woohoo! How are we doing tonight? We're doing awesome. Awesome. Doing awesome. I'm so honored. Thank you, everyone at Game Realms. Everyone from behind the scenes and everyone packing the store tonight for tonight's big event. It's really, really cool to see. I know that I myself could not do what all these fine gentlemen and ladies are doing this evening. Well, we're just glad to have you here. Um, beautiful Burbank, California. It's a great place to sort of hang out. We had a crowd of, I don't know what you say, 40, 50 people here? Now? At least. It's really At packed least. out. Especially behind us. Uh, how have you liked, um, let's see. Well, okay, to start, to start off. Sure. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, introduce yourself. Kind of give your right, right now. You're here because Street Fighter Five. You're the voice of Ryu, um, but you've done other work for especially Street Fighter titles in general as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been. I uh, started on Street Fighter Four. My name's Kyle Abear, by the way. I voice Ryu, obviously. Uh, and um, I started on Street Fighter Four, and then came the mini iterations like Ultra and all the multiple editions that came out. And then of course there's. Uh, Cross Tekken, mm. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, right. and uh, Super Smash Brothers, and uh, hopefully they'll they'll give me a call. I'm hoping that uh, we'll get to be a part of Infinite for Marvel vs. Capcom. I know the, the trailer just released, and uh, fingers crossed, I hope they give me a call. Ah. It'll be awesome. You know what? I think they will. You have, you have the pedigree uh, <laughs> uh, behind it. You have the, the history of the, of the Capcom games and, and uh, other games as well. Yeah, and uh, so in Street Fighter Four, I believe you were Gokin. Is that is that correct? No, just just Ryu. Oh, just Ryu. Yeah, character specialist all the way yeah. through. There you go. Excellent you to go. hear. Um, so I'm curious when you come to these sort of events that you know the people could sign, people could have things signed by you, so on and yeah. so on and so forth. I hear it's a common thing. I see like uh, sort of videos of it online where they post like, oh, the character voice for this person saying this line, and you know, YouTube video blows up, millions yeah. of views, because everyone likes to see the face associated with it. Like, sure. Oh, it feels so weird. So my question is, when people come and ask you to sign things, so on and so forth, um, do they often ask you to like, record a voicemail for them or something? Absolutely. There's always a shout out for someone who couldn't make it. It's right. like, yeah, yeah. That's definitely the thing. It's like, Sorry again. Johnny, um, you know, the answer lies in the heart of battle. Ah, you know, oh, okay. good! You know, throw that in there, and then they'll they'll never they'll never get rid of that answer of that voice clip. They'll right. say, they'll, they'll they'll pass it on to their kids. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and I'm yeah. super flattered beyond words that I get to have such a cool job and to be part of such a cool franchise. I'm a gamer, casual gamer, mind you, but I still know how how important what a what a what an influence in pop culture that the Street Fighter franchise has. It's like, man, this is so cool. Definitely. And that's I think that's an interesting point that you bring up. Um, people often think of, like, they, they would hear something like, oh, Game Realms Tournament, Street Fighter V Tournament. Yeah, I'm not going to go to that. That's all crazy, hardcore, like, super competitive, right. whatever, whatever. This is a great place just to hang out. This is a great place just to it's sort of meet It's a social people. event. And, and it runs into the late hours, which is fantastic. It's a, it's a great chance, especially for anyone in the Hollywood, Los Angeles area. Definitely. Or here in the San Fernando Valley. Burbank, great town, great mm. city. This is a great new store uh, with a lot of great history in it. You know, you want a, a piece of... Uh, of of a nostalgia, you know, any sort of game console, all, all the all the history involved. I mean, that alone is worth making making the drive over here. Completely agree. I mean, as as we speak, I'm looking at a wall with like sort of collector Mega Man X posters, a Ducktales poster. Like, where are you going to get this? What, what type? This is a beautiful environment. We have pixel art of Earthworm Jim behind us and his boxers. This is great. So there, is a, there is a plushie of the Hadoken, the actual fireball. Oh, you can man. actually pick one of those up here. You hear that, guys? Yeah, we're gonna hatch it. We'll show it to you here on the stream in just a moment. We're, we're gonna we're gonna bring it for you guys because uh, this is this is the type of things you get at Game Realms. You get that sort of, I don't, know, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a collector's thing, but maybe like an enthusiast. This is right. really the, the game's enthusiast. Let's show right. this on the str on the stream real quick. Let's do it, man. Hold that for us. In All front right. Of the camera. This this couldn't uh, be more perfect. Uh. We have the voice Hadouken! of Ryu throwing the Hadouken. Beautiful. And Absolutely it's so wonderful. Cute. It's so cute. It's comfortable. It's cute. It's made of uh, plasma. I'm not sure what the what the exact <laughs> lore is. Not sure on where that. that comes from. Satsui no Hado, the, the, <laughs> the, the dark Hado power. Um, That's right. Speaking of speaking of Hado, this I don't know if this could have been timed more perfectly. There's a match with Ryu on the screen now. Yes. 
Um, tell me when you so you said you know kind of casual, but still still like playing the games. Do you find um, when you when you play these games, do you get sick of reuse like voice? Do you play somebody else? No, no. I honestly get the biggest biggest rise out of, of getting to play a, a playable character in a game. And I I voiced a lot of RPGs and things where mm. I'm background not playable characters. Ah. But to be someone that you can actually control, manipulate through the controls, and and do all the attack moves. And, you know, it also, I have the added bonus of remembering what it was like to actually record it and oh. blow my voice out. Right, right. You know? But but also working with the fantastic team behind the, the you know, the scenes, the uh, the folks at New Generation Studios mm. um, and the talent behind uh, all of it. You know, while we don't get to record all together as a cast, we come in one at a time because we are matching the timing of the Japanese audio oh. when we record these games. Right. Uh, and then, so we tend to see each other either as auditions and or sessions in and to begin, or we're on the convention scene, hmm. where we're very blessed to get to come to gaming conventions, pop culture shows, anime cons, uh, and then we'll get to hang out then. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, if anyone, I know there's a lot of people that um, always sort of were drawn to maybe doing character voices or doing doing voice work at all. What would you say to someone who was interested in that sort of thing? Like, like how did you did you learn any sort of lessons or, or some advice that you would give yourself, however many years ago? Like, if I could go back, I would have gotten involved in my theater programs at school. Gotcha. Okay. Get get that drama stuff under your belt because you have to build those acting skills. Mm. That is the key thing in voiceover. It's not doing voices. It's not doing impressions. It's bringing something original to the table that it's going to make you stand out. Right. Because it's a very competitive field. And hopefully, you know, luckily I had, uh, I guess, the pedigree of working on Dragon Ball Z and some other iconic franchises leading up to the audition for Street Fighter. Mm. So I don't think uh, my involvement with that necessarily led to like, casting, but I did have that, that rare opportunity uh, because of, of networking through the years and, and meeting people on the scene that uh, were able to make that opportunity happen. And right. I was very, very blessed. I didn't think, you know, when I go into an audition, I do the best I can and then I divorce myself from it. I'm not, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to get hired. Right. But when I tried out for Street Fighter, this is back eight, ten years ago almost, uh -huh. I tried out for Ryu because I knew that that's an iconic character. I think yeah. I tried out for Ken and E Honda and um, Bison right. and El Forte, I believe. Oh, Forte, very good. So they said, just look at this three ring binder here, pick out some characters you'd like to read for. And I said, oh, absolutely. I yeah. will, I'll try the new guy and some of these classic ones. And hey, it's up to fate. You know, I can't control whether I get hired or not, but I'm going to do the best I can. And nice. A few months after the audition, I got the word that I got Ryu and. And when we record these games, we're localizing them. You know, they're Japanese games, yep. and then they come out way after the fact, usually, yep. for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So when we lo localize them, it takes almost a year, sometimes more, wow. for these games to come out. And we're sitting on these, you know, non-disclosure agreements. Uh, we can't talk about Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. And all that stuff. And you see the great trailers at E3, and it's like, I can't say anything. And then, you know, <laughs> all that fun stuff. Um, I, I really love the point you brought up there. Um about about it being acting, it yeah. really being acting. Um, one he. of the things that I think was a very illuminating video for me, just kind of understanding that idea, is of course um, uh, Mark Hamill, the the voice of the Joker in the animated sure. series, right? And I think someone posted on YouTube uh, a video of him in the booth, right? Yeah. And he's and even, you know, as much as his voice is that iconic Joker Joker voice, he's not sitting there speaking in the mic. He's being very gesticular. He's 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 going around he's making all these movements we can't see anything he's doing right but he realizes that it's that it's uh, critical to yeah. making that to making that character come to life yeah and the interesting thing about voiceover is you are channeling a lot of this stuff the physicality of something mm. the expressions of your eyebrows and your hands all of this stuff has to come through your voice in the performance right and that can be an interesting challenge for people that are used to only being on camera or only being on stage I have the most extensive experience really just being behind the mic so I'm most comfortable with it, and I think it's the most fun. Right. That's you know that's funny. That's you, you, yeah. You you have to. It's 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 a difference. As much as you're using that acting ability, you're realizing that you're limited to this audio, no visual. Right. So you have to yeah, like you said, you have to make sure that everything that you want to transmit comes through in the audio form. Yeah, and we, we we tend to uh, stand as we're recording because it opens up the diaphragm, it keeps right. the energy level up. And of course, we're especially doing something like Street Fighter. It's requiring a lot of, uh, you know, all those sounds. We're doing them like three takes in a row. 
and sometimes more intense. You know, small, medium, large, closed mouth, open mouth, clenched teeth. Mm-hmm. You know, then the full-on death screams and all yeah. that. We'll record the dialogue, cutscene stuff first, and then move on to the screamy stuff. Right. So these sessions can last, you know, four hours or longer. Wow. Sometimes they're broken up into multiple sessions because we don't want to kill the actor, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, I was going to say yeah. they probably do the death screams at the end so you don't blow out your voice right. for the right because we do, we're we independent contractors you know we still have to work at other sessions for other projects and there has been more than one occasion where I've blown my voice out screaming and then the next day I have to sound like I'm a teenager oh, on Naruto or DBZ say, or something they probably say to you like oh, sorry this wasn't for like a smoker in his, yeah. yeah like no like this was a teenager that we needed fortunately more, more production uh, studios and, and clients are, are, are privy to the fact that if you blow your voice out you can't talk you can't make money and you have to cancel sessions that's a bad thing right. so they let the client the, the clients will let the talent know ahead of time mm. hey we're going to schedule you to come in Thursday from 9 to 11 and it's going to be very, very scream intensive. We just want to let you know. And it's like, thank you. Nice. Thank you. I can prepare for that. Nice. Gives you a warning ahead of time. Yeah. And you can do all the, the, the cheaty things that are not really cheating, but they help you get through their, like, throat lozenges, throat coat, uh, Chinese cough syrup, mm. which is absolutely essential. Tricks of the trade, I imagine. Absolutely. Because your voice needs to have that integrity to last, you know, sometimes hours on end. Right. Which is also a skill that I think a lot of people take for granted, like, just try talking yeah. for like multiple hours on end. Yeah. The next day, you you will sound. People will ask, "Did you go to a concert? What happened? Like, yeah. were you at a rally? Why? Why did you? What happened to your voice? Did you do a lifetime of smoking in, in the last twenty four hours? So I'll do video game voiceover workshops at cons, so people can kind of get an idea. I'll pick mm. them out of the audience, have them do like a you know right. sound, and then they're like. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. After once. After it's one. Like, now, picture doing that for two or three or four hours in a row. Right. Ah. I can only imagine something like an, um, for like an event, like an acapella thing where the the, the, the sound yeah. is muted and then you guys have to do it every single time that he does a fierce punch. Like, Absolutely. Oh, Lord. That would be tough. Yeah, my God. Anyone that has any, any sort of public performance, singing, public speaking, acting, whatever it is, when you're relying on that voice to be strong, on top of having the skills and, and, and all that, and... You know, it, it, it's kind of like a juggling act, but you know, for me, it's it's an, it's a very interesting. It's always a fun challenge. Hmm. Every time I go into the booth, or every time I speak publicly at events such as this, or or whatnot, I love it because I'm so passionate about what I get to do for a living, and I'm a fan of the stuff too. It's not just a job to me. It's, right. This is stuff I'm passionate about, and I've been a fan of animation and multimedia and pop culture ever since I was a kid. This is what made me want to be a voice actor. Wonderful. Well, hey, the community is very glad to have you and Thank we once you. again we appreciate you coming out absolutely um, it's an be... honor to be here at game realms and, and to see all the all the people just super stoked to to to, to 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 win all the cool prizes up for grabs here tonight right it's uh it's wonderful one of the things that i love about i got into the fighting game community 2007 ish and uh-huh. one of the things that i um definitely always have noticed is just the the passion right yeah. the 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 willingness for people to drive so far, just to just to fight somebody sure. next to them, and and you know, hey, they may go zero and two, but they learned something. Yeah, they they they, they tested themselves in the heart of battle, as, as Ryu might say. And the the iconic uh, status of this franchise, where you'll have big battles that end up in, in like Vegas right. or in China the or wherever. Warrior. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. And you know, to to see something like cool, and you know, I hope to see it become more of a trend, where video game stores such as Game Realms will have events like this, mm. and it becomes a big social thing. You have people coming forward and meeting their friends and becoming new friends with other people that we all share this common link and this enjoyment of this great uh, multicultural m- media event. Right. I think that's something that, at, by this point, is really the stereotype's been broken. But still, to this day, people hold out that, oh, you play video games? Yeah. Oh, you're, uh, man, you must be in the basement and never talk to anybody. Come out to Game Realms. See, see who's playing video games. Everyone's being social, laughing, yeah. joking, having a good time. There's a fraternity here. There's a, there's a brotherhood here um, that really, you don't, you get with any any community where everyone is united under one under one right. Thing. So um, and, and it's a beautiful thing because we're in the age where it's cool to be a nerd. Ah, it's cool to be a geek. That's right. Now while there's still and there probably always will be bullying, man, it's still cool. And I'm here. I'm almost 48 years old, and I still I have a Switch, and I, I play Mario Kart. I just got that, and it's like I'm a gamer, and I'm I'm not ashamed to admit. Right. I love playing this stuff, and I think that stands the test of time. Whether you're a kid, a grown-up, and you have responsibilities. Oh, I can't adult today. It's like, you know, we need an escape. And this is a great escape for people. Definitely. Um, I mean, historically, 
uh, that sort of escape, whether it be movies, whether it be books, and video games are just another kind of successor in that lineage, right? Right, and you see so much fantastic creation, artists, people wanting to help create these games, right? Uh, people of the YouTube generation and Twitch TV, you know, linking and becoming the new the new networks of the of tomorrow, where people are are, are not, are not channel surfing on cable but hooking up their smart TVs and smartphones and tablets and watching great streams like this. That's right. And all the technological uh, innovations to make it easier for you to have a voice. Right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Like years ago, for, for us to have this sort of production from, from, this, from this store would have been near impossible. Right. We would have, ha have, had, to have had, uh, had to have had a lot, huge financial backing, all these things. Um, and now with the availability of that te technology, internet, streams like this here we are yeah and I grew up wanting to do voices for animation and games and everything but I also wanted to work in radio right and now podcast is the radio of the future that's right which is fantastic yes. I've, I've done some podcasting it's a lot of fun where anyone with an internet connection can immediately reach a worldwide audience right super important the um, the availability of that dissemination of information is, is fantastic and it's and it's 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 allowed the people that really have the best content that have that put the most into it uh, yeah. to succeed it's made it's made this sort of thing really a meritocracy which is another theme i love about fighting games you either win or you lose right that's There's right their, like Pretty it's not forward. like it's not like you knew you knew a guy so you got like one match up like no like, sure you play the match uh the better the better player wins so yeah. um Absolutely. definitely sort of connecting themes here we're and then the and you intertwine that with social media ah yes and the the instant pulse of the people in the moment you mm. know you're not only sharing fun things, but but things that matter too, like you know, real world events and politics and, and all that. But you can also have anything where anyone's voice reaches the world instantly, and you can get feedback. I'm sure we have a chat room set up here yeah, on the have, Twitch uh, for Game Realms. We have some. We have some viewers. Uh, we got we got some uh, some people. Uh, the, the man in blue here is a is a legendary troll. Um, oh so yeah! Awesome! Yay for trolls! We're loving, we're loving trolls. Twitch chat wouldn't be Twitch chat without trolls. <laughs> I'm calling you out, I'm calling you out, buddy. And we also have a delay, so he's, <laughs> he's got to wait for me to, to badmouth him a bit. Anyways, we have Futile playing against somebody, but I don't know if it's his. I know, I know that the person's name isn't the winner of C, so we'll have to get that updated later. But um, do you do you watch any um, competitive Street Fighter? Do you get a chance to uh, to see what's going on with with characters from time to time? I know. I, uh, just just as a side note, the, uh, the balance patch came out a while ago for season two, and unfortunately, Ryu got some unfortunate treatment. Oh no! Um, so, I, so currently, I the characters popped in the game lately. I haven't seen what's happened with him. Competitively, he's a little weak, so we're all we're all sort of bummed out that the uh, that the the mascot essentially of Street Fighter isn't isn't pulling his way right now. Well, that's not cool. Yeah, Capcom. What's up with that? What's yo? up with that? Uh, there's some changes coming in the next month or so that should help him out a bit, but um, he kind of got overshadowed by the curse. I mean, other other iconic mainstays mainstays of Street Fighter are, are, are powerful now. You've got Balrog, the boxer. Um, you've got uh, Bison, the dictator. So, well, yeah, I representation. Mean, you don't want the lesser characters just to be automatically gimped. You right. know, right. give give everyone every dog has their day. You know, yes, exactly the ebb and flow of balance patches, especially especially these days with balance patches. I mean, back in the day, there was one version of the game. And yeah. Whoever was whoever was good was good forever. <laughs> there's no there's no there's no changes in Marvel Marvel two like Sentinel is always good. It doesn't matter. Right. So um, hey, that always, was pretty different than uh, you know the uh, the Super Nintendo days. Right. They, <laughs> no one's gonna come in and like put a chip on the cartridge and like right. okay this is the balance patch for, oh, for Street Fighter yeah. two. Yeah. Here let me blow on it real quick. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Super Nintendo guys, um, let me see if I can turn the camera around here okay, real quick. Get Mr. Assad in the frame as well. Look at that beautiful smile. <laughs> Look at that beautiful man. If you can see the setups behind him, this is one of the beautiful things about Game Realms. You see a Super Nintendo setup, N64. That's a Dreamcast. Do you guys remember that? Um, and I can't tell. I think that's a Wii behind him, more than one of the more recent ones. But you can come and experience the sort of retro revival uh, of video gaming here at Games Game Realms. Um, everyone's a really big proponent of old school games on different days they have tournaments for games that are long gone by um, I think Friday nights they have like anime games like Vampire Saber which I believe was released in like 1999 or something wow so love the people that uh, run this thing love the people that, that keep this community alive yeah and uh, currently we're looking for the opponent of Mr. Azad himself the general of dankness well, they must be in here somewhere because they got a lot of people hanging out yes 
always tough to run a tournament. Um, I remember when uh, I went to Evo first year, I, I went, I think, to 2009, 2010. It was mm -hmm. the first year they had Street Fighter 4. And the entrance exploded. Like, they used to have maybe 200 people enter. Yeah. And I think the first year I went, it was like 1,100 or something instead. Oh, my God. Running that bracket was a nightmare. And we're talking about sitting, waiting at your pools, uh, waiting to be called. I think I waited for seven hours oh for, my my, God. for my match to get called. They fixed it after that year. But, yeah, always an experience. Um, no matter how long you're waiting for a tournament, you can always say, remember that time? I waited yeah. for seven hours. Back and in I'm, the day. Yeah. Back in my day. Yeah. Um, I think I saw Jeremy come in. Let me see. I'm going to take a water break real quick. Let me All see if right. I can get him on, on board. In the meantime, guys, enjoy the vocal talents. Mr. Kyle, Kyle Herbert here, himself. Right here, right here, right here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is not awkward at all. I'm just going to sit here on a live stream and address you in 1080p. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. And if you're not here and you're in the LA area, come on. What are you waiting for? Get your butt down to Game Realms on Victory Boulevard in Burbank. You can get to be a part of this awesome Street Fighter V tournament. Okay? Not everyone sounds like they're from the Bronx. I just feel like delivering that and I should promote it that way because that's what happens. I'm a voice actor. Sometimes silly things come out of my head. And sometimes I even get paid for it. But right now, my message is to you, dear viewer, that's what is going on. Sorry to leave you there for a second. That is quite all right. Check, uh, check the bracket stuff going on. Let me see if I can adjust this bracket. Is this updated? Maybe I need to, up, maybe I need to refresh it. Um, I'm sort of new to working this. Whoa, what a cool logo. If only you guys could see that. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. Okay, we have General Assad, if I can find his name here. There he is, facing up against Snacks. Oh, I remember Snacks from last week. Okay, cool. Uh, excuse me, real yeah. quick, and jump on. General Assad and Snacks. Reset score, save. Look at me. I'm doing this. I'm doing it big. Okay, so we have General Assad on his patented bison. So here's the thing you got to know about General Assad. He's insane. Okay. This guy right here, the most insane person in the world. And... Um, I think a like a Latin drummer in his meantime in the er, in the in the meantime. Watch how he the, the viewers at home can't see it unfortunately. The way he plays the game is an art form. He's he's hitting buttons and rhythms that that I'm sure are are symphonies in his mind. Uh, he's he's performing all these intricate uh, button patterns and button presses. It's like music, and I I really wish once again guys, watching at the stream at home is is good, but. Come, come to the event and, and see the magic that is General Assad playing the game in real time. <laughs> we almost need some music to go along with it. He, some, if someone with enough time could absolutely put his button presses to music. There's a beat in there somewhere. It wouldn't be, with, it wouldn't be uh, General Assad without it. And you'll also notice, too, when he makes a, uh, an excellent play, or especially, uh, especially excellent play, he will add a little bit of flair to it as well. He'll sort of, he'll sort of press the buttons and, and bring his hand up like, he, like he's uh, pep or, uh, seasoning something. with Like uh, a, a choreographed dance. Right. Uh, right, right. A beautiful, a beautiful dance. Um, and he's actually up against the wall here, gets hit by the low medium kick. One to one. I believe it's the first game, so I hopefully the score is still right. And um, let's see who's going to get this first game. Snacks with an interesting Ibuki. He was playing decently well last uh, last tournament. But General Assad, one of the other things uh, to go along with the theme of him being out of his mind uh, is his use of dashes. So Bison has this inter interesting dash in this game where he disappears temporarily, as you just right. saw there. And uh, Assad makes good use of that. I think he's one of the players that's more psychological in nature, so he knows how to get inside somebody's head. And he's really good about reading his opponent and making, uh, making those mistakes known. All and right. He, and he is, he is definitely taking the advantage here. Um, gets the bomb mix-up. Ibuki coming through. This is the patented Ibuki, though. Excellent mix-ups. Look at these. Almost has stun racked up. Can he get a good throw escape from Assad? Slides out and still blocks it in time. Assad running for his life. Unbelievable. Gets out of the corner. That was a great series by Snacks, but just insane defense by Assad there. No anti-air. V-reversal to get him off him. EX Cycle Blast. He's charging behind it. It's going to stay on the screen for as much as possible. Tries to get the shimmy. Doesn't get it. Standing around house in the Psycho Fountain. Look at the, the, the turn away from Assad. Hey, oh, 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 oh. He knew exactly what he did. Snack shaking his head. That's Fantastic. one up Assad. All right. 
Well, hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna step off the stream here, but thank you for uh, let's bring tuning him on in. The, let's bring them on the, the screen one more time, guys. Show some love. Follow this guy on Twitter. They can follow you at at Kyle Abert. That is spelled H E B E R T, like Hebert, but it's pronounced Abear, like a bear is attacking me. So at Kyle Abear on Twitter. I don't think I've heard a better like, like like how to the guide to pronounce someone's you name. You will remember that. it now. You will. I'll never forget it. that. Exactly. Well, excellent Thank to have you. you, sir. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you all for coming out. And if you're not here, be a part of it soon to Game Realms in Burbank. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right. My pleasure.